was a major shift in the climate, the end of an ice age 12,000 years ago, that made the Great Barrier Reef possible. As temperatures warmed, melting glaciers transformed the continental shelf into a warm, shallow sea. Conditions perfect for an explosion of life. Ironically, it's now predicted that our changing climate could be the demise of the reef. But I'm on my way to meet a man with a more optimistic view. From up here, you really appreciate nature's handiwork. This maze of islands, coral caves, and almost 3,000 individual reefs stretches for over 2,000 kilometres, an expanse so vast it can be seen from space. In the middle of it all is my destination, Lizard Island. It's a place Professor Terry Hughes knows well. Hi, Terry. Hey, Ruben. How are you? Welcome are you? to Lizard Island Research Station. Thank you. What a magic day. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? Let's get out there. Yeah, the wind's picking up, so the sooner we go, the better. OK. Terry recently spearheaded the first large-scale investigation into whether warmer waters really will spell the end for all coral species. We had a big wake-up call on the Barrier Reef in 1998 and again in 2002 when we had huge bleaching events that affected the Barrier Reef along its whole length and across its whole breadth. So I'm interested in how climate change and other human impacts on reefs are changing the species composition of coral reefs. What we call coral are actually colonies of hundreds to hundreds of thousands of tiny creatures called polyps. Living in their tissue is photosynthetic algae called zooxanthellae, which provide corals with essential nutrients and healthy colour. But when the water becomes too warm, the zooxanthellae are expelled, leaving the coral bleached. That was the first time we'd really seen bleaching at that scale. We were worried about the long-term impact this will have on the reef because the world is getting warmer and warmer and the frequency and intensity of bleaching events is, is inevitably going to go up. Water temperatures increase as you travel up the coast. The hottest temperature in the north of the reef is a full nine degrees warmer than the coolest temperature in the south. This gave scientists a unique opportunity. We were interested in how the mix of species might change along that huge thermal gradient and what that might tell us about the flexibility of corals, how they put themselves together to make an assemblage of species, how that might change in response to climate change and global warming. Terry's team surveyed 33 sites spanning the entire reef, identifying over 35,000 individual coral colonies. The study has given us a more detailed understanding of the changes that will take place as the world's oceans gradually warm. The good news is complete reef wipeouts are unlikely. Coral reefs like this one will still be here in 50 years, but they will be very different. The picture that's emerged over more recent studies is that bleaching is incredibly selective. It's actually acting like a giant filter in that it's changing the mix of species because some are much more susceptible to bleaching, others are much more resistant. There are winners and losers, if you like. All it takes is for water temperatures to rise just one or two degrees above the seasonal average for several weeks and susceptible species can bleach. What sort of coral is this guy? This is a branching coral, it's called Acropora. In terms of climate change survivors, how do these These fit guys, in? generally speaking, are among the most susceptible corals to bleaching. 
So these things live life in the fast lane. They recruit at a very high rate, they grow quickly, and they die young. We found a huge flexibility in the mix of species from north to south. And that gives us some optimism that when susceptible species, the losers, if you like, decline, that they won't all decline at the same extent. And in fact, we might get some of the winner species actually increasing. More robust corals can handle a rise of up to four degrees for a month or longer. Often one of the last corals left on a degraded reef is this particular species called Parides. So these sorts of corals will be the winners in the future if the climate changes? These are the toughest corals going. Right. This thing is 200 years old at least. Amazing. So yes, they're withholding, they're standing their ground. They are the winners in the future. So while there is a future for the hardier species, it's not such good news for the fish that depend on the more delicate branching and table corals for habitat. Once we lose all those really lovely three-dimensional corals, what does that mean for the critters that live on the reef? Well, there are lots of species that depend on corals for protection from predators. There's a small number of fish species that actually eat corals. When corals become scarcer, those species will become less and less abundant. It's a very dynamic system, and climate change is changing the whole way that reefs function. I don't agree with statements that the Great Barrier Reef will all be dead in 20 years' time. It'll be very different from today's mix of species. But I'm recently optimistic that if we can avoid dangerous climate change, we'll still have a Great Barrier Reef. 